नमस्ते मैम नमस्ते एवरीवन आई एम फ्रॉम काठमांडू नेपाल गुड इवनिंग Hello and a very good evening to the workshop series organized by Mnet. Mnet has put together a series of workshops for teachers and educators by leading experts in the field as part of ELT to explore some of the core competencies using innovative tools and techniques. My warm welcome to the speaker Dr. Karuna Karan T and all the educators who have gathered from different parts of India and different corners of the world. your participation ignites and motivates us to push for better planning and what binds us is the passion a common passion to be effective teachers educators and research scholars who constantly try to upgrade themselves as an english language teacher and more over it's great to have a fraternity of teachers in india and abroad who are always ready to collaborate and share the ideas experiences knowledge and best expertise to help build this community of practice I thank the speaker, Dr. Karuna Karan, who at one call agreed for the workshop. So, without wasting much time, let me begin the session. Today, sir is going to take a session on teaching aids in English language teaching. The sir is a T E S L Ontario certified English language teacher, uh, O C E L T, and got his PhD in English language education. EFL University Hyderabad he has been an ESL teacher english as a second language teacher at the university of jaffna for 19 years and is teaching uh, english as a second language to undergraduate students attached to several faculties and in english language teaching units to those who read elt for their degree program he has presented research papers in international journals and conducted workshops nationally and internationally Also, he has authored two books and was a co-author in four books published by reputed publishers. He received Innovator Academic Research and Dedicated Teaching Faculty Award 2017 by Journal of Engineering Technological Research and Journal of Engineering Technology and Management Science Malaysia. Dr. Karuna Karan served as a coordinator for World Bank project for three years, from 2012 to 2015. and headed english language teaching center for 10 months he delivered keynote address and plenary address in the national and international conferences and chaired many technical sessions in the national and international conferences he got a he got a teaching assignment from ministry of manpower oman in 2017 and served as a lecturer in english at as a lecturer in shrinivas Well, a uh, vocational college from one of for one year. He also served as an adjunct faculty at VIT for one year in 2018. He has been associated with many professional professional association and has actively involved in research in the areas of bilingualism, ELT uh, through literature and so on. When Sir had given me his bio data, it was 21 pages. So he has so many awards. i have read out very little because i wanted to concise one minute but he has to his credit a, uh, a number of research papers uh, a number of uh, awards so we have a very distinguished guest amongst us uh, we welcome you so uh, sir once again and we are very happy very very happy that you have taken your time your precious time uh, to talk to the teachers over here thank you sir and i request you to uh, take over the session 
Okay, thank you, Renu. Renu, uh, see uh, for the nice uh, introduction. Uh, so, good evening, all. Uh, I'm uh, Karunagran from uh, University of Jaffna. See, I. Uh, good evening. Uh, you see, uh, she has given uh, a good introduction. Anyway, so I have been in the field of English language teaching for nearly uh, 19 years. Uh, so today, uh, see, I'm very happy to uh, give a lecture uh, on this teaching aids, uh, which is, I mean, uh, this uh, topic is very, um, you know, for, you know, very important nowadays because that uh, without teaching aids, the classroom, you know, will not be, uh, you know, active. So, <clears throat> uh, so that's why I thought of uh, uh, talking about. Uh, this teaching aids uh, uh, on this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, so, uh, so let me start. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, it is. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, teaching aids. So when I uh, slide uh, slide show, you can you put it on slide show. Oh yes, no, yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. So uh, before I start, so I just uh, you know uh, remember the days uh, of my uh, schooling. So I mean uh, when I started my. Uh, uh, I mean, this uh, schooling uh, in 79, I think. So at that time, this, uh, uh, there were not much uh, of this teaching aids uh, uh, as we have today. So uh, I think uh, at that time, the English was introduced uh, when uh, the children entered uh, I mean, when they are promoted from grade two to grade three. So it was introduced and grade three. So at that time, uh, you see, uh, what our teachers uh, did was that they used to take us uh, outside. I mean, they take us uh, uh, to uh, a place where uh, we had a small garden and uh, sometimes we had uh, trees so they, I mean, they used to teach this, I mean, particularly the teachers of English. Uh, they used to teach English uh, under trees, in the garden. So, and uh, uh, because, uh, you know, that, uh, I mean, that at that time, you know, they, you know, the, the, they thought that, uh, you know, taking us to garden uh, would enlighten us first and, uh, uh, you know, they might have thought that uh, this would uh, uh, this would give us some kind of real experience. You know, when you know, you know, when we were in grade three, uh, I mean, uh, we were we were taken to a small garden located in the school premises. So, so they named the, the tree, and then you know, we were able to see, and you know, we were, we were able to remember even today. Uh, I'm able to remember what I uh, was taught when I was in grade three. So there is, you know, there is a, a saying, uh, I hear, I forget. Um, I see, I remember. Uh, I do, sorry, I hear and see. Uh, uh, I practice, no, I, 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 I remember more. When I do, I understand well. So uh, when you see, when you, when you hear something, you can't, you know, uh, you can remember only 20%. When you see, uh, you may uh, remember 30%. When you uh, uh, see and hear, you may, may remember 50% of what you learned. And when you do something, you may remember 90% of it. So that, so uh, the teaching aids, so would help to remember things easily. That is a, uh, that is a uh, bottom line. 
so then uh, we will see you know today you know uh, see the outline of my uh, talk what are teaching aids why do we need teaching aids types of teaching aids principles of teaching aids teaching aids and esl classroom and conclusion right <laughs> so what what are teaching aids so there are many definitions uh, by many scholars uh, uh, see when they you know when we uh, read uh, books i mean when we uh, read uh, definitions with in relation to these teaching aids uh, many scholars define it in a different uh, with the different uh, perspectives uh, so this is uh, you know the the dictionary defines teaching aid uh, as follows a teaching aid is anything used by a teacher to teach a lesson or make it more interesting to students so this is uh, what the dictionary says i mean uh, this is how the dictionary defines teaching aid and see uh, the the second one is teaching aids come in any form uh, intended to engage students to teach so teaching you know according to this teaching aids could be in any form so you can you know uh, you can uh, have a teaching aid in the classroom inside the classroom outside the classroom right and uh, you may uh, see this i mean you may get teaching aids i mean uh, in any form in different uh, places so which uh, you know what uh, wh what do they do they engage they try to engage students i mean to teach uh, they they plan i mean they are intended form intended to engage students to teach and the the next one is teaching aid is a tool or being which is in the classroom or outside in any form to engage learn uh, learner in learning yeah this is in relation to the the previous one so you know there are some other uh, you know definitions for teaching aids teaching aids are the tools that teachers use them in the classroom such as flash cards maps cassette and blackboard yes so these are tools teaching aids are tools uh, the teachers use uh, in the classroom so in order to teach a lesson so they are you know uh, they could be flash cards the teaching aids could be flash cards maps cassette uh blackboard and so on so so this is another definition uh, for teaching aid the next one is a teaching aid is a tool used by teachers to help learners improve reading and other skills uh, illustrate or reinforce a skill fact or idea and relieve anxiety fears boredom since many teaching aids are like games All right so what uh, you know the the main idea of this uh, definition it is a tool you know the the, the teaching aid is a tool and uh, it is used by teachers uh, in order to help the, the learners to improve reading and the other skills so uh, and uh, you see uh, the it the teaching aids are used to illustrate some you know some concept or it it is used to reinforce a skill fact or idea uh, and uh, you know it can also relieve anxiety fears boredom because you know these uh, teaching aids are like games see uh, the when when we teach uh, you know this is you know i mean uh, this is a general one so when we teach something in the classroom if we uh, if we te if we read a lesson so for example if you uh, suppose it is a history uh, class if you read a history book or textbook uh, the students will get you know bored because nowadays you know the if you read uh, continuously they might start talking something uh, which uh, you know which is not relevant to the classroom so but if you uh, if you uh, make use of a short video about uh, 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 history or about a king's uh, history then they might you know uh, uh, watch that 
with an interest and they learn it. And uh, I can remember, you know, uh, one incident that took place in our school, uh, you know, in our school means in, uh, in my son's school. So I was there and uh, actually that was a uh, history class. The teacher you know, actually started because I, you know, I, uh, I just, uh, I do researches in the field of bilingualism. So I went uh, there, I, I went to a school to see how these bilingual classes are, uh, you know, being conducted. So I just uh, watched that, that history teacher uh, I mean, uh, the, the textbook uh, is in English and this he started uh, watching, I mean, reading the text, I mean, the textbook. The students uh, did not pay attention to what uh, uh, she was reading. So, so then, you know, I, I, I suggested that, you know, that this, uh, they could use some uh, videos, YouTubes, right? So with relevant time uh, in relation to a particular uh, history topic that uh, the teacher uh, is planning to teach. So, and uh, see, uh, so the first thing is, you know, the, when you, uh, when you, uh, when you use uh, this videos, uh, particularly nowadays, the, the children are interested in watching these uh, videos. And so what we can do is, you know, if you, before we start a lesson, uh, we can show a short video with, uh, I mean, uh, with regard to, I mean, uh, in relation to that uh, particular uh, topic. So by this, the students are able to get a background idea of what they are going to learn. So then they get, uh, you know, uh, motivated. So uh, that way, these teaching aids are, you know, very much helpful nowadays, uh, particularly in the, in the modern uh, era. I mean, uh, where we live. Uh, so these teaching aids, uh, you know, enor enormously uh, help the teachers to, you know, teach their uh, lessons with, I mean, um, uh, without much difficulty. Right, so why do, you know, I just, uh, I talked about a little bit about uh, why uh, we need to uh, use teaching aids. So let's see some points. Right. So first, you know, uh, if you use teaching aids, you know, the students, uh, you can, you know, they get a good clarification and you can easily clarify things uh, using uh, uh, teaching aids. So, so for that one, uh, for the purpose of, uh, you know, clarification, so we, uh, we are supposed to use uh, the correct teaching aids. And the uh, second one is the classroom, you know, we can make the classroom live and effective. So uh, like I said, you know, we, if we don't use any uh, teaching aids in a classroom, the students will, you know, become bored and uh, they're not interested in the lesson. So what, uh, so the, uh, they might uh, uh, talk something uh, else, which is not at all relevant to the topic. And it is very difficult for teachers, I mean, nowadays to control the students, uh, you know, uh, uh, when they are not, you know, paying attention to the lesson. So in order to make the classroom live and effective, you, you know, teaching aids are very much uh, useful. So, and, uh, you know, when we uh, see uh, this learning from direct experience. So when we use teaching aids, you know, students get, uh, uh, a chance to uh, feel a direct experience. For example, you know, uh, you, we can uh, say, uh, we can talk about uh, uh, a virtual trip. It's a virtual trip in the sense you can, we can show a video and, uh, and we can explain things, uh, you know, with, uh, with regard to this uh, trip. So uh, when they, you know, show, you know, in order to, uh, instead of uh, talking about uh, some, you know, uh, trip without showing any uh, 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 videos, the students will not, uh, you know, understand, and uh, they may, they don't feel that they're learning. So when you show some uh, videos, uh, you know, with regard to that, you know, particular topic, 
they feel that uh, you know they are learning and uh, the learning happens unconsciously so that is there is a, you know uh, there is a, um, saying that we should make the students i mean uh, the learning should happen unconsciously then only you know it, the, the 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 experience would be uh, nice so so this teaching aids help uh, the learners to learn i mean feel direct experience and also they learn things unconsciously discouragement of cramping yes so you know so if we yes, give notes say no, i mean i can remember in my days when i was in the school the primary or even the upper secondary the teachers used to read um, uh, notes so the students you know we you know we we kept on writing but at at uh, at some point of time you know we lost you know in, you know interest and uh, we just uh, you know we could not uh, keep pace with a teacher so just uh, we did not we could not you know write and uh, that's all that's uh, that was the that, that's the end so you know this one uh, the teaching aids would see uh, you know resolve this problem there won't be any cramping if we use Uh, right yeah, teaching aid and uh, see increase the vocabulary right when we use uh, you know teaching aid it could be any uh, teaching aid you know uh, that we uh, will uh, we'll see the principles of teaching aids later so uh, say when we use the right uh, teaching aid uh, uh, the, we can you know the students can learn a good uh, collection of uh, vocabulary and in the case of english uh, language teaching so if we uh, use some video clippings uh, when we teach uh, any topic it could be uh, tense it could be uh, uh, yeah, it could be some uh, close right it could be a narrative so teaching narrative so if we yeah, if we uh, so show a right uh, video clip and uh, you know the students can uh, uh, pick the right uh, vocabulary uh, relevant to that uh, context i mean uh, that topic so it helps the students to uh, pick vocabulary easily and uh, see i like uh, i said this uh, this will generate motivation when we use uh, teaching aids uh, then the, the students will get motivated and they you know they like to learn they you know they they like to engage themselves in learning process so it it uh, gives a lot of motivation and uh, see say nowadays this uh, the all almost all uh, of us are able to access internet and uh, uh, the other apps so we can uh, we are able to save a lot of time and money so if we uh, if you use you know right um, uh, teaching aid uh, you know it, it saves our time so we don't need to you know uh, see now you know those days say 30 years ago see when we did not have this much of this uh, it facility so our teachers used to you know mark up or they just uh, you know copy uh you know th- something from some other books and they uh came and read that and we used to write a lot uh, but nowadays it is not uh, so you know yeah, everything is now you know uh, there uh, in the internet uh so we can simply access uh things and we can easily prepare a lesson uh without much uh, um, uh, difficulty and without we can save a time by this so so these are the uh, you know some of the you know needs uh, which we can uh, consider i mean uh, while uh, when we uh, go for uh, teaching aids so the then the sec- the next one is principles of teaching aids so principle of teaching aids so how you know what are the principle to be uh, considered uh, be you know when uh, we uh, prepare teaching aids so the principle of selection one the, so when we uh, you know select i mean we, when we go for a teaching aid so it should be 
suitable for the grade level. So for a primary, if you teach English for primary children, so we have to, you know, prepare a, a, a select a teaching aid, which should be uh, suitable for their grade level, age level, and other character, characteristics of the learners. So that's a number one thing is when we select, when we select the teaching aid, we should uh, take care of, I mean, grade level, age level, and other characteristics of the learner. And when we select a teaching uh, uh, aid, we should ensure that it, uh, you know, it generates interesting and motivation. So it should be, it, it should be interesting. I mean, it should generate interest and motivation. So otherwise, you know, the, the if we uh, if we don't uh, choose the right teaching aid, it will not, uh, you know, motivate the students and it will not create interest. So the and the uh, the, the 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 chosen teaching aid should be. The, the true representative. Uh, I mean, it should, you know, uh, uh, it should uh, help to achieve the desired goals. So, so that we should uh, see that it is a correct representative. The designing, uh, desired learning objectives, right. The, the, the correct uh, teaching aids help the teachers and the learners to achieve the desired learning objectives at the end of the lesson. So when we select the teaching aid, we should uh, you know, keep these things in our mind. The second thing are the principle of preparation, right? So when we uh, prepare a teaching aid, it should be available locally. Uh, I mean, you know, that's why it should, it, it, it should not cost a lot of money. So it should be available and possibly, I mean, locally and it's and possibly available. So, uh, so that is the second thing is this one, uh, the preparation. And teachers must be trained. Okay. See, uh, for example, uh, uh, it's overhead projector. See, nowadays, you know, most of the teachers uh, know how to use the overhead projector. So, and uh, the internet, uh, the smart board and multimedia. So if the teachers are not trained, they don't know how to use them effectively. So, I mean, uh, so they should be, I mean, uh, uh, they should know how to uh, use them. So for that, the, they, they must be trained. Those who don't know how to use them must be trained. Teacher self-preparation of teaching aid, yes. You know, it, they should be able to prepare the teaching aids on their own and uh, without uh, help. So, the, the, so that is the next thing. And principle of handling, yeah. When, the, uh, when we, I mean, uh, go for a teaching aid, we should uh, ensure the safety of that, right? And, uh, you know, it should be, uh, you, you should be able to lend it to others, I mean, in the school or wherever we work. So that is principle of handling. And principle of presentation, teachers should carefully visualize it before the class. Yeah. So the say uh, the visualization. So uh, say we have the, the the prepared, chosen and prepared uh, teaching aid should be visualized correctly, appropriately in the classroom. Uh, see uh, then the familiarity and the manipulative use. Yeah. Teacher, I mean, uh, should get used to. Uh, get familiar with the with that uh, teaching aid. So then only you know the he or she sh should be able to yeah you know use it in the classroom. And uh, we you know the uh, the teacher should ensure that uh, the teaching aids you know uh, uh, don't uh, you know make any damage. It doesn't uh, get I mean it doesn't cause any damage in the uh, classroom. So that is also very important. So, I mean, uh, while preparing or uh, while we are, we are choosing the uh, teaching aid, we should, the teacher should ensure that it doesn't, it will not cause any damage uh, in the classroom. Can be seen uh, by every student, I mean, uh, all the students. So it should be the teaching aid should be uh, visible to all students. That all, that too. Uh, I mean, should be that uh, should to be uh, ensured. 
and respond. Uh, so this is audio visual stimuli, yeah. So the principle of response. See, uh, the teacher uh, should ensure that uh, these uh, teaching aids will, uh, you know, induce a response from the students. It should be a stimuli. So the, the next one is continuous evaluation, right? You know, the, uh, with the help of these, you know, you know uh, teaching aids, the teacher should be able to evaluate uh, continuously the students. So it, uh, I mean, uh, say, uh, the, I mean, when we select, when we uh, select uh, or when we decide to use teaching aids, we should uh, ensure that it helps to evaluate the students also continuously. Right, so types of teaching aids, right? Uh, what are the teaching aids, uh, you know, uh, uh, available? So, uh, see, uh, you know, very long time ago, uh, normally, you know, I mean, uh, the teachers used to teach, I mean, use only textbooks. Maybe in, uh, in the 19th century, uh, the teachers used to uh, use textbooks only. And later, maybe the, the mid-19th, mid in the mid 19th, 19th century, the photos, uh, audios, you know, I mean, uh, uh, they uh, came into being. And so uh, uh, the teachers start using the visuals, photos, uh, I mean, even audio, uh, and uh, maybe some uh, videos as well. Uh, but nowadays, <clears throat> uh, it is, you know, we have sophisticated uh, uh, teaching aids. So in uh, audio, you no, know, basically audio, there are three uh, categories uh, of uh, teaching aids that could be used in the English language classroom. One is audio. See, audio means that is, uh, it is related to um, uh, auditory, auditory sense. And uh, then visual, uh, you know, these are, you know, uh, uh, these uh, are connected with sensors. The first one is hearing. So the second one is seeing, sight, right? So uh, this is involved in, I mean, in the sight sense. This one is auditory. And this audio visual means the combination of both. So uh, this is, uh, this is a, a pyramid uh, which shows uh, the, uh, uh, so what we can do or what students can do when uh, they uh, when we when they are exposed to this uh, teaching aids see uh, this one uh, this is uh, this is called corn of experience it is uh, it was designed by Edgar Dale and what he sees is like this you know 10% of reading you remember on, right how 10% now if you read we remember 10% uh, uh, here only uh, again 20 percent uh, uh, see uh, see view images only 30 percent we uh, remember so what we are able to do is you know this uh, this help you know he read here see so this help we are able to I mean the students are able to define list describe explain and the next thing, uh, see if, if we see and hear, see, uh, we can uh, see and if we see and hear, then we are able to demonstrate, apply and practice. So these are called passive learning. So if we, these, these uh, you know, uh, read, hear, see and see and hear, these are in, uh, called, I mean, these are involved in passive learning. Then active learning, see active learning, see and write. You know, participate in hands uh, on workshops, for example, and design collaborative lessons. And 90% of, you know, uh, we can remember uh, simulate a model or experience a phenomenon, uh, design, perform a presentation or experiment. So, this one, you know, see uh, this active learning, this is called active learning. You know, which is colored uh, by red. So this in this uh, active learning, you know, we are able to analyze, define, create, and evaluate. 
so so what we can no uh, so what we can uh, the, the best way to remember is to say and write one the other thing is do we have, you know we have we have to engage the student uh, to do something then they are able to analyze uh, and uh, they are able to define uh, they are able to create and they are able to, uh, and we are you know they can also they are able to evaluate something and uh, uh so the teachers also uh you know evaluate the student performance easily so this is called a corn of experience uh see this is a simple definition of this uh, audio visual aid so anything by means of which learning process uh process may be encouraged or carried out carried on through the sense of hearing or the sense of sight i said the you know, audio visual aid uh, you know uh, are connected to sense of hearing and sense of sight right uh, see this one the types see types of audio visual aids so see audio aids you know uh, the examples you know the cassette record player tape recorder uh, radio language <laughs> network headphones microphones uh, tape recorders so these are examples for uh, 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 audio aids uh, see this uh, uh, this visuals uh, can be uh, categorized or classified into two one is called projected visuals and non projected visual aids so a projected visual aids overhead projector so uh slides and transparencies film strips right and non projected visual aids pictures and images uh graphics realia model uh cushion area rods uh boards display so these are examples for uh one is for i mean non project uh, projected visual aid so the overhead projector is, uh, is an example for projected visual aid and uh, pictures and images so they are the uh, it is an example for non projected visual aids so the audio visual aids uh, i think this is uh, you know nowadays uh, uh, the the very popular and uh, familiar uh, one is computer and then uh, videos television movies so these are uh, the example you know, these are the you know these are the types of audio visual aids right so see the audio examples see you know the radio tape recorder gramophone lingua phone audio cd language laboratory right see these uh, you know what can we teach as far as english language is concerned what can we you know what uh, what uh, skill can we teach through this uh, audio visual aid well, sorry audio aids so for for example tape recorder so we can use it you know those days in maybe 20 years ago uh, the english teachers used this tape recorder to teach listening skill <coughs> sorry because they just uh, record something in the cassette and they play it so and uh, you know uh, sometimes they prepare and uh, nowadays we don't use this uh, tape recorder in the classroom i mean very often so these are uh, outdated uh, Uh, once so so they used to use this straight recorder to teach listening so but it is it was the best uh, you know auditory i mean audio aid at that time so now you see we have audio cd now dvd and right uh, we have uh, we use uh, we have used cds maybe uh, some time ago but now we use i uh, you see language laboratory all all i mean uh, uh, all universities and uh, colleges uh, okay. have this language laboratory where you know how do uh, how you know how do uh, we teach listening in our university so what we do is we take we assign you know we assign uh, uh, time slots i mean we uh, to the students and they have to come to the language laboratory where we just uh, you know uh, have uh, softwares and the, you see in which uh, you know the listening lessons are already uh, prepared 
uh, we are using that we you know uh, teach listening skill so it is so this is how we teach the listening here so but it is these you know language laboratory most of the as far as the secondary uh, schools and uh, i mean the schools are concerned uh, maybe almost uh, most of the schools have this facility nowadays maybe the very the schools located in the rural uh, areas may not have uh, 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 facility to uh, you know teach listening to uh, through language laboratory because language laboratories are not uh, uh, set up in those uh, schools so uh, so the the through uh, audio aids the the best skill that we can teach is uh, listening so so this is uh, the tape recorder so uh, the, i have already explained how we can use it and how it was used and now also if, if possible we can make use of this tape recorder to teach uh, listening and especially uh, those days uh, maybe in my time uh, they used uh, this uh, tape recorder to, to uh, uh, with a with a view to improve our pronunciation but nowadays we are not uh, bothered and those days you know uh, our teachers uh, expected us to speak like uh, you know uh, it was a myth but like a british uh, person but nowadays we don't have that uh, uh, problem because we have uh, englishes nowadays and we don't have we don't consider there is only one english in the world so so it is so nowadays no we we, we can teach an acceptable uh, accent that means it should be intelligible so that's what we need um uh, today so this radio also yeah radio uh, you know was used uh, you know a very long time ago because you know the uh, at that time you know when uh, these uh, technological innovations were not uh, there so the people used radio for teaching purpose and particularly you know radio was uh, used for i mean for reading purpose as well uh now the audio cd later you know the audio cd was used and uh, you know how it was the language laboratory uh so this language laboratory uh this kind of uh language laboratory uh, is uh, found in uh, universities nowadays so through i mean we teach listening uh, they are, you know using this kind of uh language laboratories because this is the you know because the students uh get motivation when they you know learn listening through this kind of laboratory and it is also clear you know see we give uh, headphones to each uh, one uh, so that uh, they are able to uh, hear the sounds clearly so they you know they like to you know uh, uh, if you teach uh, listening without say you no know, sometimes i know our teachers in my time in the schools uh, what they did was they used to you know dictate I mean, they read something and then uh, they give uh, questions i mean uh, the, the reading was followed by question uh, set up questions and we were supposed to answer those questions so uh, so you know we missed we there uh, there was a high possibility uh, to miss many things but now it is not so 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 this uh, this kind of uh, language laboratory Uh, you know uh, creates a lot of interest among students to uh, learn i mean uh, english uh so this is uh, the i mean yeah, movies uh uh okay this is you know uh, visual aids so visual aids means so students uh, you know uh, get a chance to see or watch something so say um the the learning happens the, through many uh, things so nowadays you know when they when they watch a movie also they learn a uh, uh, lot of english so for example uh, you know, if they if we uh, show them uh, a movie related to uh, a literature say uh, king's lear or macbeth so when uh, they watch uh, this uh, meaning i mean movies uh they you know only thing is you know the english used 
I mean, the type of English uh, used in those movies are not, you know, uh, very uh, comprehensible because, you know, they used medieval English sometimes. So, uh, and uh, the discourse was different. But uh, anyhow, uh, they get interest to watch those movies. Uh, and if you, uh, when we teach uh, this, uh, I mean, grammar or uh, speaking, uh, when we uh, use, you know, some kind of comedy uh, scenes, they are, you know, they get a lot of, you know, uh, they, lot of uh, they get a lot of input. I mean, they get uh, the structure. <clears throat> they are able to capture that structure uh, used in the conversations. Uh, and they're able to, um, you know, able to catch uh, catch their slang words, uh, and they're even some to some extent uh, they are able to uh, get. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, where to use? I mean, the context. So, uh, so we, you know, we cannot uh, tell them, you know, this word or this sentence. This uh, sentence should be used in this context, or this word should be used in this context. You know, it will not, uh, uh, you know, it will not create much uh, effect, uh, I mean, for them. So, but when they watch uh, this kind of uh, the comedy scenes in English, they're able to uh, catch a lot of uh, the structure, words, styles, and so on. So that way, these visuals are very much useful uh, to teach. Um, uh, English. And here, uh, see this, uh, the various types of, you know, visual aids. A uh, chart, what is chart? You know, chart, we see uh, there are charts like a pie chart, flow chart, uh, even uh, tree chart, um, uh, flow chart, pie chart, bar chart, uh, line graph. So, you know, when, see, uh, if you want to uh, uh, train the children for IELTS exam, the first, uh, you know, uh, question in the writing section is, is description of uh, the chart, line graph or a chart. So it is, you know, uh, we can, you know, make use of charts uh, and uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, we can give a model uh, on, uh, how to write a report uh, with the help of the data uh, given. So uh, that is. So this is. Uh, this is. This is. Uh, this will help to uh, improve the academic writing because you know this academic writings. See, uh, they need uh, not the. Uh, I mean, the undergraduate children. Uh, they just uh, when they go graduate. Uh, then they afterwards, you know, they uh, they go in search of jobs, and then uh, see they should be able to see write some academic stuff. I mean, in good writing. So this uh, to improve the academic writing, this uh, charts uh, are very much useful. So we teach in that the university when we teach uh, writing skill. To undergraduate students, we teach this uh, IELT, IELTS stuff because um, the immediately after graduation, uh, uh, sometimes they go out. Uh, I mean, outside the country for higher studies. So first, uh, first the one requirement to get scholarship from foreign uh, universities is this IELTS core. Academic writing should be seven or six point five. So the, this is the first. Uh, you know, thing in the writing is this one. The, I mean, in the IELTS section is uh, the description of chart. So the chart uh, is, is uh, you know, we can use uh, charts to uh, uh, teach uh, writing. And, you know, this is the one, uh, one uh, definition for this uh, chart. According to Edgar Dale, a chart is a visual symbol summarizing and comparing or contrasting or performing other helpful services in explaining a subject matter, right? Uh, see the flashcards. So these flashcards, you know, are used, uh, even now we use. So this can be used uh, at the primary level. So when we teach English to primary uh, children, so these flashcards are very useful to teach, you know, first uh, the vocabulary. We can teach uh, a good 
vocab i mean vocabularies to these flashcards and you see and uh, we just show them and ask them uh, what is written on the card and if they uh, you see say correctly and then we can ensure that uh, they got what uh, we uh, expected so this is another type of flash card right flash card are useful you know what what can we do with the uh, flash card flash cards are useful for drilling new uh, new letters words and other information they are normally used in in a classroom but can also be used more informally so it can be used at home uh, you know we can you know wherever you know we we want to teach i said uh, in the beginning uh this flag, uh, teaching aids can come in any form anywhere right or we can use this uh, at home also to teach something uh to our children flash card is a part of a set of cards on which are written items to be studied yes uh they are flash because it is you know shown quickly i mean uh, one by one by one to uh, learner to elicit a quick response ah uh, then the next one is flip charts flip charts are like this see we you can see in a big seminar in a hotel or in a university we when we have a large uh, uh, participants a large number of participants when we use uh, uh, flip uh, charts so these are useful in teaching situations where you need to teach a number of people at a time they are used when uh, when books are unavailable right so yeah, particularly uh, especially we use uh, flip uh, flip charts when the books are not available or scarce or too expensive for individuals to have their own copy when other media such as overheads and slides are not available and where group learning is most cult culturally appropriate yes uh, so when you know see i said uh, a large number of people uh, to teach a number of people at a time so i mean where group learning is most culturally appropriate so For group learning, also this uh, can be used. Uh, a flip chart is a collection of large pages which are bound together at the top. The pages are flipped or brought up and uh, up and to the back as they are used. A flip chart is bound together at the top uh, in such a way that uh, pages uh, can be easily turned and lie flat. Right? I think uh, I have shown the example. I mean, the this is the. uh this is uh, uh a good example of uh, this flip chart and flannel board so flannel board is uh, like this so flannel board is like this so what uh, it consists of a piece of flannel or felt made from a wool stretched tightly over a strong backing of plywood pictures cards and similar material can be made stick to on it right this you know for uh, particularly you know we can this can be uh, used uh, flannel uh, board can be used uh, in the primary section you know to teach them some images some you know the names of uh, animals uh, names of birds right so to uh, teach uh, these you know uh, basic things we can make use of this flannel board uh, in the primary classes a uh, cartoon so cartoon is also you know uh, you know through cartoons we can teach a lot of things so see uh, you know this may i borrow a pencil so what is so this can be you know depending on the level it, the cartoons can be used uh, in the primary class intermediate and uh, uh, advanced classes as well but uh, this example is you know is like uh, it's suitable for primary class so here you know we show a cartoon and then ask the students uh, to say something about this so you know this is may i borrow a pencil so similarly we can sh show a cartoon and ask the, the students to say uh, what they feel about it so then they will uh, you know it uh, you know it uh, it urges them to uh, speak so then we can ask them to write uh you know what they feel about uh, uh this uh, about a particular cartoon so then we can uh, teach them uh, uh, writing so at the same time you know when you know this way uh, this kind of uh, cartoons also you know uh, help them to create develop their 
develop their creativity so so uh, so I, you know they we can you know teach uh, you know improve their creativity and they, we can improve their writing uh, right and, the, and also we can uh, ask them to speak about i mean say something about uh, uh, about uh, a particular cartoon so cartoons are uh, uh, right so so cartoons is a drawing intended to convey a, a message or point of view about things events or situation may make free use of exaggeration and symbolism right so you know when we use you know you can uh, you are free to use you uh, 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 symbol symbols and you know and uh, the the students are also free to say anything about the cartoons uh so this is you know some more examples of uh, cartoons see prime number can uh, numbers can only be uh, divided by themselves and one here are the first 25 numbers say that is one uh, see there is a, see uh, a story is given it is you uh, know clear uh, see uh, why do you avoid him so right reason uh, even the numbers the dumbest uh, animal recognize uh, sorry uh see you know they you know this involves uh the students uh to write something or to say something about the particular uh cartoon this is you know particularly useful for a small uh, to teach english uh, to uh, to teach writing or speaking uh in the primary uh, classes and this one is a drug abuse so you know the, you know we can ask the students to say say, say something about this uh, cartoon so the cartoons are useful to teach uh, yeah, i mean almost um, except uh, i mean except uh, this one uh, listening other three skills can be taught using uh, cartoons and this one is uh, you know uh, the the common the most common uh, teaching aid that we use uh, not nowadays i mean the, the, the most common teaching aid used uh, is blackboard chalkboard otherwise so you know that we can use it this is a visual aid and we may we, i mean teachers use it for drawing pictures right and uh, even uh, writing words uh, and uh, see uh, uh, yeah mainly you know they can you know uh, write uh, you know words and then ask the student to say the meaning of uh, the word uh, something like that so it it is it is the it was it is called a traditional teaching aid the traditional means you know this this was how the teachers uh, i mean uh, the, you know this was used for a long time and still it is there but now since there are the technology uh, has uh, taken over uh, uh, the teaching i mean these sites you know these are not much used nowadays uh, then bulletin bulletin board bulletin board you know this is also used uh this is a visual aid you know but in what we can you know uh, uh, write something uh, uh, a small news right a small piece of news so that for that purpose uh, this uh, bulletin bulletin uh, boards are used this is models so the models are also you know uh, this uh, this you know this models can be uh, you know there are many uh, cross sectional models uh so uh, these are you know uh, the, 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 the three dimensional models so uh, as and when we, you know it is suitable or it is necessary we can uh, pick the right kind of model uh film strips also you know uh, can be this uh, film strips can be used to teach uh, uh, speaking Let's say, yeah, I mean, uh, writing, because you know we can show this 
and then uh, photos. So they, you know, in in a film strip, we can have uh, photos, and then we can show them to the students, and then you know, it can create some kind of uh, uh, learning, uh, uh, teaching, learning activity. Right, audio visual. <laughs> so, uh, audio visual aids in the field of English language teaching. Right. So, like I said earlier, see the language laboratory uh, where you know we can uh, we have the facility uh, of this uh, audiovisual uh, aids. So the, the students, the the staff, the the students. So this is a picture how the students uh, learn English. So the you know with this audiovisual uh, aids, we now uh, teach. Uh, listening, speaking, uh, grammar, uh, writing, right? All, all in one. So if you if you have a good language laboratory, we are able to teach uh, all skills. I mean, uh, related to this ESL. Yeah, I mean, English uh, as a second language program. Uh, if you want to, you know, do it in a in an effective way. If you have one good language laboratory, it is it makes uh, the teacher's task very easy. So uh, in, in our you know, university, we have a very good uh, language laboratory. And I, this where I stay now is also one of them. I mean, uh, we have some uh, three, I mean, in the faculty of arts, we have three, uh, sorry, four language laboratories, which are uh, fully equipped. So uh, students come and they you know, there are, you know, the teacher is only a facilitator and uh, we have softwares installed in the system. So we just, uh, you know, give some training uh, to students uh, as to how to use uh, these uh, softwares. Uh, that's the, you know, so they, once they get used to this software and they can learn on their own and even uh, the teacher's role uh, is uh, only uh, you know minimized to a facil facilitator uh, that too uh, as times uh, as as time goes on uh, you know the students uh, you know get used to the software hub the, the, uh, I mean the function of the software and they uh, manage on their own so uh, so that, that that's why at the beginning I said it saves money and uh, uh, time so the we don't need you know too many teachers with one you know for demonstrator or facilitator the lesson but uh, that that person should know English so uh, we can run the show and uh, so it saves money and time so that is one uh, see in the, we had uh, I mean we we, we had a uh, some, I mean, there was a research conducted in the University of um, Southeastern University of Sri Lanka. So they found it. I mean, uh, the students' response show this is, you know, uh, shall I tell you, you see. Right. So this is the, the research, I mean, the, the outcome. Uh, so students say 95% of the students say said helpful for better learning, audiovisual uh, aids. And 95% uh, of the students uh, said maintain high level of interest in learning English when we use, uh, I mean, uh, audiovisuals. And 85% uh, of the students said encouraged to learn English. They were encouraged to learn English when uh, teachers uh, used uh, right video audiovisuals uh, in the audiovisual uh, aids in the classroom, and 92% of the 92% of the students said helpful for active participation in the classroom. This uh, research was uh, done in in the in the eastern province of our country. Uh, so this uh, the students' responses were like this. And uh, I think I have a few more things to uh, uh, share with you. So this, uh, at the end of the research, uh, we could see, you see, 
using traditional me method you know the students uh, you know were uh, i mean it was uh, actually uh, teacher center traditional methods like chalk chalk uh, blackboard chalk board uh, textbook right uh, even the overhead projector also you know uh, not like uh, that is not traditional but uh, the chalk chalk uh, board i mean chalk uh, blackboard um, textbooks so they are teacher centered teaching aids you see teacher always talked I mean, teacher talk time was more than the students talk time so here you know the according to the students uh, respond 35% uh, only i mean uh, students uh, talked uh, i mean 65% teachers uh, used to talk so when we using multimedia when we are using this multimedia visual aids i mean audio visual aids the 80% the students talk time was 80% 80% uh, uh, you know in the in the most of the time students uh, spoke in the classroom whereas only 20% teachers i mean i mean uh, the the teachers talked only 20% in the classroom so the audio visual aids uh, involved i mean uh, students in a better way i mean in a, in a Uh, in the classroom i mean they uh, they 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 are able to uh learn uh, english efficiently and effectively uh when we when we are using the right uh, audio visual aids in the classroom particularly in the esl classroom uh i think shall i wind up here uh, hello hello Uh, yes, sir. Shall, shall I take yes. a five yes. five minutes more, or so you want to talk five minutes? Sir? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so uh, so this is again, you know, let's see uh, the retention. See, in relation to this uh, uh, research done uh, in the field of audio visual aid. See. Uh, this is uh, you know this is you know this is adapted from the ntl institute of applied behavioral science learning pyramid see if you give a lecture uh, the students are able to capture 5% it's like uh, 10% reading right if you if they read uh, something they if they listen to lecture they capture only 5% uh, the retention of what they uh, listen uh what they listen is only 5% reading the retention of what they uh, read is 10% retention of audio visual is 20% so the retention of uh, demonstration is 30% the 50 retention of what they discussed is 50% so practice doing something i mean uh, if they do something the the they retain most of the things that they uh, have done and if they teach something to others if the retention is i mean they can retain 90% of what they uh, what they learn or what they when when they teach i mean in a in a uh, in a classroom uh, when students start uh, teaching something to other student fellow student then you know they can retain uh, most of the things you know, what they uh, learn so this audio visual by and large the teaching aids uh, they help the students to you see they they they, they involve particularly the audio visual aids involve the students in the classroom uh, uh, to teach even to to interact with uh, other students and uh, they get a chance to interact with the teachers as well as the student so these because by the inter interaction they uh, they retain uh, what they learn what they study right so so the conclusion is uh, the teaching aids help the students 
to uh, to remember things well. I mean, remember things easily. So, uh, as English language uh, teachers, we should uh, you know uh, select the right uh, teaching aid uh, to uh, teach a lesson, and it should uh, it we should ensure that the uh, the teaching aid that we uh, you know select should meet the desired learning goals at the end. So that is very important. So, I mean, why before prepare a lesson, uh, I mean, before we go for a teaching, right, we should uh, consider the selection principle. Now, whether it is, uh, it uh, suits the level of the student, uh, suits uh, to the context, and uh, it should uh, be easily available should be visible, it should uh, be very relevant to the topic, right? And it should be inexpensive as well. See, the for teachers also, uh, no, I mean, they cannot afford to spend so much of money on uh, buying these things. So it should be inexpensive and easily available. So, uh, and we should see, the teacher should know how to use them appropriately in the classroom. So if we if we if we uh, are able to use the correct teaching aids in the classroom in the in the language classroom, we can you know save money and time. Uh, not only that, it, it is very easy to teach, uh, you know, uh, uh, to make the student understand the lesson well. So that is my you know. Uh, Observation. I mean, I have observed in the language classrooms here, uh, and uh, the teaching aids work very well in the language classrooms. Uh, so, uh, I, I mean, uh, the the government uh, should think about providing these uh, facilities to all uh, the schools, colleges, uh, institutes, and. Uh, other educational uh, institutions uh, located across the country. Thank you for the opportunity. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm done. Yes. You're done? Yes. It was a really uh, eye opening session with the, the importance of teaching aid. So, yes. <laughs> um, any question anyone's having? What is lingua fona? Uh, like lingua phone, that was a question someone had asked. Uh, uh, lingua fona is uh, uh, it's a kind of uh, you know uh, you know we can teach words. <laughs> lingua fona is you know it's it's a kind of radio, but uh, it, it it is used to teach uh, sounds words. Okay, and um, uh, one question that I had seen was um, how, like in this technological world that we are talking, how these mm. teaching aids uh, are very useful? In that, yeah, it is very, very much useful because you see, uh, uh, right from, you see, in my home, uh, you see, children started using this uh, iPhones, uh, you know, maybe when they turned uh, two. So now, you know, my eldest son uh, knows much more what I know about these things. Because it is easy. They can, you know, they, they can easily understand what, if you use the right kind of, uh, for example, if you want to, you know, I was in Oman uh, and uh, I used to teach uh, English. So then, uh, see, what I did was, you know, I mean, some of them, you know, in the inner class, See, we have, uh, I had students with uh, mixed ability. I mean, uh, some are good, maybe a few students are good. Uh, some uh, like, you know, average. And some of them were very, you know, bad. I mean, they were not, uh, even they don't know, uh, they, were, they were not able to understand the, the most common uh, words. So what I did was, you know, I used to uh, download these uh, videos uh, when I, uh, I know, for example, I taught them simple present. 
so then uses of simple present tense you know where and uh, the context so when we show a video uh, to them they get uh, motivated and uh, you know nowadays students are you know they are more they most of the time they work on this they spend their time on this uh, uh, iphone uh, ipad and uh, laptop so <clears throat> so it is easy uh, see uh, uh, say if we if we want to teach something uh, we can even uh, post a youtube address and they can you know uh, they can uh, uh, when they are free they can download it and they can uh, see and they can easily understand for during this lockdown period for what we do so we are uh, now i mean we started teaching uh, through online so uh, say what uh, we teach uh, you know we upload some materials into this lms learning management system and uh, they easily you know, download them and then <clears throat> when they are free say some some all of them are not uh, now able to uh, come online so what they do is when they are free they download uh, the materials upload it into the system and they study it. so uh, so it is uh, you know uh, one thing is uh, and it also this audio visual aids uh, bridge the gap Uh, found between the teacher and uh, the student see those days you know we had this uh, even in my time you know there was a big gap between the teacher and the uh, student so nowadays you know it is it has uh, been minimized so teacher become you know mostly teacher becomes uh, most of the time uh, facilitated in the class so so the student you know get uh, students get motivation and they uh i mean you know, they don't feel any inhibition uh, in the classroom when you uh, you know when you teach uh, something with the help of this audio visual aids yeah that's true sir and uh, how to teach pronunciation that's one question from sarita and uh, uh, pronunciation uh, yeah. yeah it is you see uh, <clears throat> for example uh, this pronunciation is uh, 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 is a big uh, it's, it's a big, it's a it's a controversial issue because uh, <laughs> what is the correct pronunciation right for example in india you know i was in india for four or five years <clears throat> i had students i mean uh, from many parts of india they used uh, different accents accents so it is Uh, but uh, it was intelligible so what uh, you know i mean through but, uh, this uh, teaching aid what are we supposed to do i mean we are supposed to teach uh, listening uh, which is okay which, right, right. which which, uh, which caters to the needs yeah. of the student so mm-hmm. what in sri lanka we were we are supposed to uh, use sri lankan accent there is you know if, if it is you know what we say is uh, intelligible to others is uh, you know is enough so so what we can do is we can record our this is how we do here in our university but for the for advanced students for example the doctors the engineers so sometimes they want to go abroad for their higher studies so they want to do their phd's so at that time see we just use this uh, Cambridge uh, preparations uh, for uh, for teaching purpose, but uh, within the, you know for this uh, I mean I, I, that's why I said depending on the levels for undergraduates and even the postgraduates uh, now also we use our own material prepared by you know our teachers. I mean uh, not they are not native speakers. We are not native speakers of English, and we I mean. Uh, uh, I mean, as a matter of fact, so the native speaker, uh, I mean, speaker, I mean, the the speaking English like uh, native speaker is a myth nowadays, because in even in America there are uh, ac- different accents. Yeah, so, true. Yeah. So that yeah. that is so what we have to do is we have to prepare use our own preparations. I mean, available here. That is in India, right? 
so we have to go with our pronunciation that is maybe because yeah. of englishes and uh, many englishes that yeah, are coming yeah, to it yes yes so yeah. that so, so maybe for uh, yeah uh, maybe because of that we have to uh, see the pronunciation that is catering to our own uh, our yeah. own uh, our own country yeah purpose yes. yes yes that's that what we need yeah uh, indian english so, is there yeah there are no more questions sir now ah, okay uh, anyone who wants to ask question Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes. 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 Ah, uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, madam. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, sir, can you okay. suggest some teaching aids to improve writing skills, sir? How to improve writing skills of students? Can yes. you suggest? Yeah. The best, uh, best, be best teaching aid is cartoon. See, you okay. can you depending on the level of the students. I mean, if you are teaching uh -huh. in the primary uh, class. you can you you know design the cartoon or you can even pick a cartoon from some uh, uh, some books or some uh, paper i mean uh, some uh, uh, some resources and then uh, you can even the more uh, modify it you know modify in order to shoot uh, the level of the student so that is yeah that is the best because they it, it creates the activity creativity so that okay. that is the best uh, Uh, teaching AI. Yes. Tosha, ma'am, also has one question. Tosha. Tosha, ma'am. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to know. I am hmm. an English teacher. So hmm. for grammars, I teach uh, primary grade two. So hmm. what is the best uh, way to teach them? Is it audio or visual? Ah, uh, yeah, audio visual. Right. Ah, uh, the primary. Uh, so whether you have this language laboratory in the school pardon sir i am not getting no do you have the you know uh, facility of this uh, language laboratories in the school where you teach no no we don't right. we don't okay. right okay now, so in if you don't have such facility what you uh, you want to teach grammar so grammar actually you know now the nowadays uh, the language experts say Uh, grammar uh, should shouldn't uh, be taught in isolation it should be taught through contents so see what native grammar yeah yeah clt yeah yes so what you can do is you know uh, you t say uh, ask the student uh, i mean you simple present tense for example so it's a daily routine activity so we can uh, so first we can say something about what we do Uh, say i get up i uh, brush my teeth i do exercise so for since you talk, uh, no you are level primary so then ask you know uh, ask them to uh, write about their routine activity and then you know you can ask them you know first you uh, it, it should be in the first person i get up i uh, wash my face and then you can ask change i in t then he gets up so that's how so uh, the, so what thing is that, no, the, the uh, when we talk about teaching aid first thing is teacher himself is a teaching aid you see teacher here herself or himself is a teaching aid that is the we have to keep in our mind so teacher can you know uh, transform herself right so she can transform herself into a teaching aid say like you can first you know even uh, you can uh, say the say present tense is the daily uh, daily routine activity habitual action so present continuous what we are doing right now so you can yourself the teacher himself can uh, you know perform some activities in the classroom and okay. then you know yeah she can uh, she, uh, when the, the students can, uh, can also follow and you can ask the students to do something some activities you know which uh, uh, which indicates or which uh, the activity which indicate the you know, present continuous tense like that so uh, so first you can you know in a school where you yes, don't sir. have yeah, otherwise you can use some uh, this one uh, video clips if possible okay. you can download it 
okay. uh, from the YouTube and then show it. This is how you know that that's how that is the easy way to teach uh, okay. this grammar. Any other question? Thank you, thank you, sir. Okay, welcome. Thank you, sir, thank Any you, other question? Thank you, ma'am. Yes. yes. Any other question? No, I I I guess there are no questions. More on the YouTube. Okay. Uh, so thank you, sir. And I request Alpia, ma'am, to uh, propose the vote of thanks. Thank you so much, Renu, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. 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 Okay. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the members of MNET, I would like to thank Dr. Karuna Karan T for volunteering his time and providing us with such an informative and enriching presentation on use of teaching aids in language classroom. The topic explained by you will be of immense help for our teachers. I would also like to appreciate the constant efforts of Mr. Nadeem Khan for providing the necessary technical support to MNET. Many thanks to the host and convener, Mrs. Renu Dhotre, for organizing the series of workshops through the platform of MNET. These workshops have enabled the teachers to stay updated with the latest methods and tools in varied areas of teaching, which can be utilized by them in the classroom as well as for online teaching purposes. I would like to extend our thanks to the participants from various countries for effectively participating in the various MNET workshops held till date, the spread of which is increasing with every passing workshop. We at MNET appreciate the positive feedback obtained from all the participants. We look forward to such enthusiasm from our participants in the future as well. Once again, a huge thanks to everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you, sir. It was really a wonderful session. And with that, I end the session. Thank you, participants. As always, I, I am quite grateful with your presence. And thank you, everyone. So uh, I end the session over here.